Good afternoon. I'm Jill Island with Intel Corporation, representative of the company's largest and most comprehensive site anywhere in the world out in Hillsboro. I also chair the co-chair rather the Oregon STEM Employer Coalition, and I serve as vice president of the State Board of Higher Education. But today it is my privilege to introduce to you the human example of what happens if everybody comes together to support a student. With us today is Savannah Loberger, a senior at Hillsborough High School, along with her fan club, too numerous to mention, but I did want to give a shout out to her science teacher, Don Domes. Savannah sees her future as one where she can work with people to design revolutionary prosthetics and other medical devices to make their lives better. She is currently taking several IB courses as well as advanced engineering classes while she's still in high school. She took her SAT tests on Saturday. She's a country music fan. She says she makes a pretty good cheesecake. And she's inspired her younger sister to follow her interest in science, technology, engineering, and math that you're going to hear a little bit more about later this afternoon. So Savannah, come on out. Thank you, Mrs. Island, for the introduction. I am here to talk to you today about STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. I like STEM because it makes me cool and offers an opportunity to become what nobody would expect a daughter of a former Marine and truck driver to ever become. I have been advocating for STEM programs for a couple years now, and I will continue as, someone is willing to, as long as someone is willing to listen. My name is Savannah Loberger, and I am a senior at Hillsborough High School. I have been involved in STEM since the summer of my fifth grade, where my mom signed me up for a Girl, Girl Scout Robotics Day Camp. Today, I don't want to talk to you so much as a high school student, but adult to adult. Today, I want to help you understand kids. Kids are different from adults in many different ways. Adults use emails to communicate, while we high school students love to text. People like me have never known a world without the internet. Adults are focused on college and trainings, while a lot of high school students are just surviving through high school. Adults believe in the American dream. Many young adults today aren't convinced that hard work will pay off. We care a lot about what our friends think, and our social standing is more valuable than other things. Most kids follow the crowd. If we look at sports, it is what has the highest percentage of kid involvement. 7% of the kids in my school are on the football team. Football players are cool. 7% of the school is on a soccer team. Soccer players are cool. How can we bring that level of involvement to engineering and activities that will lead to higher paying jobs? Let's look at, at a typical day at my high school. My average class size is 38 students. A class period is only 90 minutes long. This means that the one-on-one -on -one time that I can get with my teacher is 2.3 minutes a day. If my class meets 45 times a semester, this means I get significantly less than 200 minutes with my teacher. Kids recognize where adults place their value because these are the programs that adults spend time and money in. How many paid coaches do the football team have? Six. I checked. How many paid coaches do the soccer teams have? Six. How many paid engineering coaches are there? I had one for my first three years at high school, which was funded through an eCHAMP grant. And I was fortunate, but now that grant has run out. We notice things like this. We want time with adults, and if we want to receive that, we join different programs like drama, choir, band, or sports. Each one of the programs listed are standard throughout America in almost every high school. Paid adults run these programs for kids, and they also coordinate the many volunteers that help. Competitions where communities come together and celebrate you. 
Now, why would kids choose STEM over that? We need more students to choose STEM opportunities, especially girls. There's a good reason to have more girls in engineering, because then there will be more boys in engineering. I'm going to share with you three programs that work in getting more kids involved in science, technology, engineering, and math. The first program is at Sherwood High School. They started an engineering class titled No Boys Allowed, an all-girl engineering class. They hoped for 60 to sign up, and they had over 140 girls register for that class the first year. I wish this program was offered at my high school. The reason why other girls tell me they don't sign up is because of the boys. From my own experience, if I wasn't so stubborn, I would not have continued in engineering. Looking back, I am surprised I even continued through robotics. As a girl in the tech room, I had to prove myself twice as much as any boy because I am a girl and I did not belong. I had to work hard to prove that I belonged in the seat of my electronics class and in the seat of my robotics team when I deserved it just as much as any other student. Today, though, I find myself sitting in the group of guys talking about our engineering projects as one of the more respected and cooler kids in the group. The second program I would like to discuss is eChamp, which stands for Engineering Coaching and Mentoring Program. eChamp has been running for five years in Oregon and it is designed to follow the sports model by creating a competitive and supportive environment. Kids are provided time with adults and mentoring through various engineering programs. I am a proud product of eChamp. I have been involved in First Lego League, First Tech Challenge, and Oregon Game Project Challenge. In each one of those, I had a coach dedicated to making me successful. And some of those were even paid coaches. If it wasn't for our out-of-school time engineering program at my high school, which was funded through eChamp, I would not be here today. I would be in the drama program, on stage and acting. This is not to say that those programs are less needed, but what, but what is needed is a program for kids who want to build, for kids who want to create, for kids who want to live out the American dream, to be recognized for what they do, and we deserve paid coaches, just like soccer and just like football. Some of you may be familiar. <laughs> Some of you may be familiar with a book called Blink. If not, the concept is that you only have a short chance to recognize something before the opportunity goes away. Your opportunity today is to recognize and interact with your next generation workforce. As I said before, we do things different than you do. We aren't you, but we need you to understand us and let us be us to get the job done. The third program is Girls Get It Camp. This is a camp that I started. Let me tell you a little about it. I remember noticing for the first time when I was the only girl in my school's robotics team. Even in high school, as I continued working with robots, I continued being the only girl. Two years ago, I wanted a solution. I organized an all-girls day camp called Girls Get It, Innovative Technology, where girls could experience several types of technology and engineering in a hands-on and pressure-free environment. We had a full one-week camp of 40 engaged girls. The focus was on encouraging girls and providing them experiences they might otherwise not have had. The target audience was 7th to 12th grade girls, and the camp provided them all with various backgrounds, a chance where they can grow their confidence in STEM and create a bridge to help them overcome stereotypes. I always want other girls to experience STEM in the positive way that I do. The camp was my way of giving back to the community and being able to provide an opportunity for other girls. The results made all the late nights of working to make it happen well worth it. The activities included all aspects of STEM and were all hands-on. They ranged from decorating safety glasses with glitter and gems, to soldering together a lie detector, many for the first time. 
But what makes my camp different from other programs, it is girls teaching girls. There's not an adult standing in front of the classroom lecturing to us about how to do something. It's peers teaching peers, and that's what engages the girls. What I most like about the camps, though, are their aha moments. One girl in the middle of learning binary as a second language said, even though I'm not good at math, I get it. I even had a younger girl look at me and tell me, I want to be as cool as you, Savannah. I want to be an engineer. This, this makes me proud. <laughs> this makes me proud, but it also makes me wonder if she will have to go through the same struggles that I did. This past summer, we, ran, we expanded our program, and I ran three Girls Get It camps, two first-year camps, and one camp for girls who, wanted, who attended an earlier session. This means that over 110 girls attended this past summer. I am currently serving as the only high school student on the Oregon Governor STEM Task Force. I spoke at the National Grace Hopper Women in Computing Conference in 2011, I was a recent panelist at Intel Symposium event, and I was invited and participated in the White House's Tech Inclusion Roundtable event. <laughs> By the way, I'm only 16. <laughs> I wonder, though, how many other boys and girls never got the chance to be me? because they did not have the adult support and educational opportunity like I did. I have found that STEM jobs are important if we are to be competitive economically because of a direct link between innovation, economic growth, and productivity. How are we ever going to be economically competitive when half of the workforce do not see these challenging, well-paying jobs as an option for them? This is the problem that Oregon has an opportunity to solve. My question is, how can we change young adults' pathways? So here's my ask to all of you. There are opportunities, but adults need to spend time with kids to make those opportunities count. Students will always follow the crowd. So what we need are after-school programs, each pulling 7% of the students into engineering and science-related activities. It needs to be just as cool as football, and it needs to be just as cool as soccer. I can show other kids how much I love STEM and the opportunities it provides, but it's your opportunity to magnify that. An after-school program costs $12,000. My summer camp for 40 girls costs $14,000. Sponsorships are still available. Please see me after if you are willing to invest in Oregon kids' futures. Let's put value into engineering and opportunities so young adults will too. Thank you. <laughs>